and his mercy and his peace be with us. A little boy was attending his first symphony orchestra concert. He was amazed with all the people in front with their different instruments. And the lights would shine on the instruments and reflect and the like. And he thought it was just great. But what especially caught his attention was when the person who played the cymbals would make them crash. He just thought it was so special. After the concert was over, his parents took him backstage to meet some of the people who were playing in the concert. And he went right away to the person who played the cymbals. He asked that person, is it difficult to learn to play the cymbals? And the man who was the cymbal player said, not hard at all. It's not so important on how you play, but when you play is important. Well, that's true of a lot of things. Timing makes the difference. Doing things at the right time, being ready for that special moment can mean a lot. Were you ready this last Advent season for the coming of the Lord? Had you, did you prepare timely to celebrate Jesus' birth? Was it a moment that you reflect on even now and say, it was so great to be in the presence of the baby Jesus for Christmas, to remember his birth and to remember that God is with us each and every day. Wow. Well, in our lessons for today, we have John the Baptist coming, coming into the world. But why did he come when he came? Well, the answer to that is God was slow in sending Jesus and in sending John to prepare the way because he was waiting for the right moment. As the people at that time would reflect on their lives and think back, they could think back of all the tragedies that they were aware of. Floods, earthquakes, battles, wars, all kinds of things. The way people were mean to each other, there simply had to be something better. And that something better was coming. John the Baptist, was on the way to get the world ready for the birth of the king, the baby Jesus. Getting ready for things is important. Today we want to talk about getting ready. Ready in our communities. Ready in our families. Ready in ourselves to receive and celebrate the birthday of the king. Now, in Jesus' day, and indeed during the Middle Ages, when a king would visit his kingdom, would travel around, people would get things ready for days and weeks and months in advance. They wanted everything to be special and ready. In medieval days, you could always find the church, because the church was the tallest building in town with its spire and its cross. That's changed. In modern days... We build skyscrapers. We build buildings to talk about people or companies or things. And the church gets, well, gets kind of hid in all the skyscrapers of the big cities. But God wants us to be prepared for his coming. And that means more than cutting your grass and picking up the junk in your yard. Getting prepared means readying your house your heart, your soul, for the good news that Jesus is born. A Savior has come. He is the Lord of lords and King of kings. So let's be sure we get ourselves, our communities, everything ready for the Lord. In olden days, shortly after Jesus' death, the early Christians used to make the sign of the X, X is a Greek letter, and it's the first letter in the name of Jesus Christ, X. It stands for Chi. And oftentimes, the early Christians, when they went along the road, would make an X mark in the side of the road to tell others that Christians had come, had been there. 
Or they'd take a piece of chalk and draw it on the stone floors or on the stone walks. Once again, to let people know a Christian had been there. In our world that has covered up the steeples and crosses of the churches, we need to let people know Jesus has been there in Christ, the sign of the cross. We are there. But not only do we need to prepare our neighborhoods, our communities, but we need to prepare our families. Families are really special when it comes to celebrating the Lord and to recognizing the Lord. As you heard in the children's message, in our families, in my family, it's where I learned to pray. The prayers my father taught us, or my grandfather, or my mom, or that I heard in church. Those were all places where we would pray and get ourselves ready for the coming of the Lord. Just a moment, sir. We need to be ready. We need to be prepared. And our prayers with our families are times to remind us throughout the day, day after day, year after year, morning midday at night, that we can come and pray to the Lord. So we want to prepare our communities that God is coming again. We want to prepare our families that we celebrate Jesus is born and he's coming again. And we also want to prepare our own hearts to be ready. Now, in one of the lessons, we talked about John the Baptist. And it was said of him, he would come and get things ready. The roads would be made straight. The mountains would be level. Everything that needed to be done would be done. We need to be sure we're doing that in our lives. Preparing ourselves individually, day by day, to receive the Lord. In preparation, in getting ready and staying ready, we won't be surprised when Jesus comes. And what's more, we will be ready to celebrate with him. Soccer player uh, Audrey, uh, Brandon Aubrey played many years in the National Soccer League. He was a great soccer player. He had spent his youth learning how to kick that soccer ball, and he was a star. But in 2023, he changed from soccer to football, and he was recruited by the Dallas Cowboys. He is the first soccer player turned football player to kick a field goal 69, 60 yards. He kicked others 59, 53. In one game, he kicked three field goals over 50 yards. In training himself through his youth, through his soccer days, he was ready to become the star that he is today. We need to personally be ready for the Lord. We need to be saying our prayers daily. We need to say our prayers when we're taking a test, preparing for a trip, just coming home at night, thankful to be with our family. Every moment of the day is a good day to remember the Lord, to be aware of His presence. Henry Ford used to tell people, the secret to success is getting ready. So I ask you the question, are you ready? As a family member, are you helping your children be ready? An autistic boy who was also with Down syndrome was the first young man with syndrome, Down syndrome to, win at, or to run in an Ironman triathlon. That's one of those races where you swim, where you bike ride, and where you run. It's a long, long day and hard work. But to help him through all those times, his dad would bike with him, would swim with him, would run with him. And on the day that Chris Nickick ran his first Ironman, his dad was there. He didn't get in the water or on the bike with him, but when it came to the marathon race, he ran each step, step by step, with his son. 
Now, his son wasn't a gifted athlete, but running with his dad just made it all right. Well, each day we get to run with our Savior. We get to walk with him. We get to rest with him. We get to have our meals with him. The Lord your God is with you. He's mighty, and he delights in his people. He wants to be at your side, and he calls you to be with him. So get ready. I know Christmas was just over, but get ready for Christ coming again, whenever that day may be. Get ready in your communities. Get ready in your home and family. And get ready in yourself, in your own heart. For the Lord is coming. Amen. And now the people.